morning, everybody. <laughs> How are you this morning, huh? How are you? Yeah, it's, it's it's Tuesday, and I'm supposed to be canteen cupping, but I got a little something I got to share first, you know. And I'm trying to kick off, whoo, I'm trying to kick off my day, so I'm going to be doing a rock star here, yeah, rock star. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Mmm, good. And today, being September 28th, yep, being September 28th, see right there, September 28th, I wanted to share with you Miss Jesus Always. And, and I want to I show my, 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 um, my, my daughter, my adopted daughter out there. Yeah, team living for Big E. Mama D, look what she got, look what she got. Huh? It's purple. Yeah, purple, that was Big E's, um, favorite color so yeah i just figured you'd appreciate that every time i see this i think of him and i think of you or i think of you and i think of him i think of both of you okay and you're always in my prayers girl i love you so anyway here's what today's reading says when your world looks dark and threatening come to me pour out your heart to me knowing that i am listening and I care. Find comfort in my sovereignty. I am in control even when global events look terribly out of control. Actually, many things are not as they should be, not as they were created to be. You do well to yearn for perfect goodness. Someday, those longings will be wondrously satisfied. Consider the prophet Habakkuk as he awaited the Babylonian invasion of Judah. He knew the attack would be brutal and he wrestled deeply with his prophetic knowledge. Finally though, he wrote a hymn of absolute confidence in me. And after describing utterly desperate circumstances, he concluded, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Yeah. Feel free to wrestle with me about your concerns. But remember that the goal is to come to a place of confident trust and trans, transcendent joy. You won't understand my mysterious ways, but you can find hope and help in my presence. I am your strength. You know, <laughs> this, this made me laugh. I had to share it with few folks today because they've laughed at me for years when I tell them I argue with God and um, they're like, you don't argue with God you don't you argue with God I argue with God you know I've had my heart ripped out so many times and you can't understand why I've been through th so many things and it's like a good God this don't happen but you know what I belong to God and I took him at his word when he said how much he cared for me. And I took him at his word when he wanted a relationship with me. You know. And so, as with any relationship here on earth, we have arguments. Well, it ain't right. It ain't fair. You didn't do this. You know. <laughs> Only, we, we kind of come back at one another. <clears throat> Blessed are those who can sit peacefully. <laughs> I'm not one of them. But guys, I do. I argue with God. I, teach, I tell him what my heart feels, how my heart hurts. How unfair it is! But you know what? God's love, his patience, his goodness. It's funny. Because even in all my ranting and raving to him, I can feel his arms come around me. And I can feel him hold me. Just like if you've ever broke down, sobbing, uncontrollably, feel like every bit of energy has just come out of your body. 
and drained and, and you, you just you're, you're a, a, a limp noodles so to speak you know and you've had somebody they've been there and they've held you real tight and just made you feel secure that's what God's done that's what God's done for me and you know what he does he won't do something for one person and not for another God is not a respecter of persons it doesn't matter how much money you have how much money you don't have it doesn't matter what color your skin is it doesn't matter what how long your hair is how short your hair is it doesn't matter if you have hair you know it doesn't matter nothing matters doesn't matter how you dress doesn't matter what the brand of your shoes are Nothing matters other than does your heart belong to him? Have you invited him? Have you given him permission to come and to embrace you and hold you and even carry you through those times when you're just not able to stand up yourself? Every bit of the energy is out of your body. And that's what, you know, these, these days, you know, let me read you the scriptures that's on here because they're pretty good too. Out of Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him. Revelation 22, 5. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light. Yeah. God has the light that's going to lead us through the darkness. Though the fig tree, this one's Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 and 19. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine. Though the olive crops fail, and the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. That's out of Habakkuk. That's, that's up here. That's the prophet Habakkuk. The one that, that awaited the Babylonian invasion of Judah. He knew. He knew it was going to be brutal. He knew he was going to have to suffer. And he knew everybody with him was going to have to suffer. And it's hard. You know, when we know what's coming, it's still hard. It's hard. That's why we have to have that joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is. It is will accept it if we'll reach out for it if we'll ask for it Psalm 42 5 why are you in despair O my soul and why have you become disturbed within me hope in God for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence yes God is with us guys God is among us God is here. He's doing great things. Whether you know, we, right now we feel like we can't. There's no hope. We see nothing good going on. God is here. God is working. He is. You know, by faith, faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's faith. That's that's that's, that's how we walk. And those who walk with God must walk by faith. I just got it. I know I'm going a little long, but this morning, and before I get into that, I got my little prayer journal here, and um, I want to I want to ask y'all because I know we got a lot of prayer warriors out there, and I myself I didn't I don't know how I met I don't know how it happened, but anyway, um, pray for a young lady. She's got a YouTube channel. I'm gonna put her link below, and if you would, I want you all to keep her in your prayers. She's been in the hospital now for for a good little long stay. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know this. I found out from Haley. I know a lot of y'all already know it. I know a lot of y'all have already been praying for it. But maybe some out there is like me and didn't know. If you would, go over. Keep her in your prayers. Uh, yeah. She, 
she, she can she can use some love and some strength out there the sweetheart of a, of a sister we have but I want to I want to um, in my prayer journal it has different little bits in the Bible to read and I want to read from you this morning um, out of Matthew 20 starting in verse 17 okay and this is the death and resurrection of Jesus being foretold okay and it says as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples along the way, and he said to them, listen carefully. Listen carefully. We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, and they will judicially condemn him and sentence him to death. And will hand him over to the Gentiles, who are the Roman authorities, to be mocked and scourged and crucified. And he will be raised to life the third day. And Jesus knew. Jesus knew what was coming. You know, in another place in the Bible, it tells us when he went to Gethsemane and he was praying, and he was like, Lord, this is so much of it's your will, let this pass from me. And he was sweating, literally sweating blood, drops of blood, okay? He knew what was coming. And then we've got Salome, the mother of Zebedee's children, James and John. And she came up. To, to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down in respect, ask a favor of him. Notice there, kneeling down. She knelt down before Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah. Kneeling down. And he said to her, what do you wish? And she answered him, Command that in your kingdom these two sons of mine may sit in positions of honor and authority, one on your right and one on your left. She wanted the best for her sons, okay? But Jesus replied, You do not realize what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup of suffering that I am about to drink? And they answered, we are able. Yeah, we think we can, don't we? We think we can. And he said to them, you will drink my cup of suffering, but to sit on my right and on my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when the other 10 heard this, they were resentful and angry with the two brothers. This is the two of the 12 disciples. The mother wanted two of those to be given the highest spots. But Jesus called to them himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles have absolute power and lord over them. And their great men exercise authority over them, tyrannizing them. It is not this way among you. But whomever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your willing and humble slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, paying the price to set them free from the penalty of sin. To be set free, it always costs life. Always. Salvation is freedom. Sight for the blind here. And as they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. And two blind men were sitting on the road. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David, the Messiah. And the crowd sternly told them to be quiet. But they cried out all the more, 
Lord, Son of David, Messiah, have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped and called them and asked, What do you want me to do for you? And they answered him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him as his disciples. You know, today in the world, so many are blinded being led by these tyrannized leaders who are going against everything that God stands for. And we need to pray, even for the leaders. That was something Brenda said in, in a little short nugget message Sunday. We need to pray for these leaders, pray for people's eyes to be open. And for those who have these blinders on, who are, who are feeling the oppression coming in from, from these powerful leaders in higher places, pray, seek through the Holy Spirit for your eyes to be opened, to be able to see what's really going on. You know, God will. I pray every morning for God to illuminate to me through what I read a direction to find the strength and see the encouragement and hope for the direction that I need to go you know and he's done that y'all he's done that through different people who have shared things with me and when I have brought personal things to him that I, I've shared with no one else and somebody will come in and I'll say oh you know you need to see this or whatever you know, because I know God's always going to bring me that answer. I don't know when and I don't know how, but I know he's working on it. He's already there. And I'll be danged and I'll go looking because they'll say, oh, just go to this little section and watch this. And I'm like, I can't do that. I don't know. I got to know everything. It's like the Bible. I can't read one scripture. I got to go back and read the front and the back. And the, <laughs> yeah. But um, I'll watch something. And lo and behold, here hop, pops out right in front of me an answer to what I have sought God for privately, just him and I. Y'all, he'll do that. He'll do that for each and every one of us. But we have to kneel down and recognize who he is. We have to ask him. You know, for those those of us who, who have Christ in our hearts, we just we, we have to, to have ourselves available to hear. And, and for those who maybe feel like they can't hear, if you've never asked Christ in, if you've never uh, taken up on you the gift of salvation that God gives us free you know uh, for there's no greater love than any man can have than to lay down his life for his friends and Christ laid down his life there is no other name given among men whereby you must not you might or you maybe or possibly you must be saved you know just just ask the forgiveness seek the direction let the Holy Spirit come into you and then pray for the guidance of that Holy Spirit and walk in it. Walk in it daily and find that, that joy of Jesus I tell you all about. Have a blessed day. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get out here. I got to get something done. But I just had to share and I hope it makes sense. Um, I know I was excited getting to read that this morning. Yeah, look at here. Look at here. Look at here, Tina. Look at here. There it is. Yep, there it is. Yep. Um, anyway, remember to keep uh, Sister Haley in your prayers. Um, you know, lift her up and uh, go over, send her some love. I'm going to put her link below. And uh, know I'm praying for each and every one of you. I love you guys. And like I tell you, God loves you so much more. Mm, he loves you best. <laughs>